So I take out my iron canteen and fill my thirst bar up. I look into my cart to check all the loot that I have, and I begin base preparation. I place down my crafting table and backpack. I put my iron chest plate on. Would love to replace it with diamond as soon as possible. I chop some trees for storage coming up. I realize I need to fix my hearts on the bottom right of the screen. To do this, go to mod options, search for first state, go to overlay, and set ticks to negative one. Also set overlay mode to hearts. Very nice, especially in hardcore mode. So I continue chopping more wood and I realize I am not fully healed up. I find a fairy. Now since I have plenty of wood, I begin making some trap doors so I can now craft myself cabinets. So what's kind of cool about cabinets, they work like a double chest, but instead of horizontal, they're vertical, which is super duper sweet. I sleep the night. Day 18. I begin somewhat organizing my storage as I need to start clearing the cart and backpack so I can start collecting blocks for the upcoming RL Craft Hardcore Base Build. I start by going over to the Lapis Hut, for you know, the Lapis. This structure also has a decent amount of stone brick that is also very useful for the base. This is extremely important. Please write this down. RL Craft monsters can easily destroy your build if you aren't aware of what kind of blocks are safe to use and what blocks aren't. Bad blocks. Dirt. You know, come on guys, no dirt huts. <laughs> stone, all cobblestone type blocks, all kinds of wood. I will explain the reasoning later in this series when we encounter mobs that could destroy those blocks. Here's a clip from a while ago when I had to learn it the hard way. Um. Yep. 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 Now that's what I call poison hot. <laughs> I worked so hard in that house. Good blocks. All kinds of cut stone, like stone bricks and polished fancy style blocks, obsidian, well, of course, and pretty much any other block that has a strong blast resistance. If you have any questions about what blocks to use and what blocks not to use, feel free to throw in the comments down below. So I take a quick trip home to sort my inventory into my storage. I sleep the night. Day 19. I ride back towards the closest village to try and find a structure I can take down for more building blocks. I find a ruined lookout tower. These blocks will work perfectly for my base. I begin tearing it down. Now there are air elementals that can spawn in the sky when you start to go up in elevation. Be very careful as these guys can give you levitation. I keep a lookout for when I am up high so I do not go splat. Something is also extremely important. RL Craft has elementals for pretty much any element you can think of, and when you kill one of these, the game has a random chance to spawn in something incredibly dangerous. They are called the Argus. Sometimes I forget about this during the early game, so definitely be very careful. I will provide a link in the description of all the elements in RL Craft. So I take a few of them out, and one catches me in the air for a bit and I have a rough landing. Now you can see that I use shears to collect the cobweb. It is such a nice thing to do because cobweb can eventually be cut with a knife into lots of string. Kind of like how I cut leather armor and rocks. I sleep the night. Day 20. I continue breaking this structure down. I sleep the night. 
day 21. I hear a creepy singing voice, and it appears there is a wild banshee on the loose. Now keep this in mind, these creepy witch or ghost type monsters can only spawn certain ways. Either from a mob spawner, or if these three blocks are placed somewhat together. Cobweb, rails, and wooden planks. Yes, that means a mineshaft is below me on the ground somewhere, so yeah. Very dangerous to live near one of these. Also, all or most mineshafts generate with an outside entrance. Pretty cool, right? I loose a few arrows and eliminate the banshee. Banshees are also elementals. Phase elementals. Meaning, they can phase through blocks. Any block. I head inside the village tavern to access the crafting table. I realize the pickaxe I made is worthless quality. So I combine with my near broken pickaxe, and guess what? I get worthless quality again. So I head back out and go back to the cemetery to collect more stone brick blocks. I sleep the night. Day 22. I finish collecting all the blocks I want and I venture out. I find another pixin. I look around and cannot find anything else, so I head back to the base. I start base planning. I sleep the night. Day 23. Now I need to clear the field so I use my water bucket to break all the flowers and grass. Now this is considered disturbing nature, so some mobs can also spawn this way. Actually, pretty much anything you do in RL craft can spawn mobs. I am sure most of you already know this. I do so carefully, and a triffid spawns when I least expect it. It gets my head down to half health. I head back to the storage to craft myself some bandages to heal. I smelt some extra cobblestone for stone pillars. I begin building. I don't do any crazy shape, I keep it simple and rectangle. Now you don't have to follow the way I build as I like to make my base extra epic and fancy. You can build whatever way it makes you feel most comfortable. But I like to sometimes challenge myself. I use the stone pillars as framework for the walls and I finish the outline of the base. Stone brick for extra detail. I continue building. I sleep the night. Day 24 I go near the river and I see these blue fishies now this is one of the reasons why I choose to live here. Living next to a wide river will give you Silex spawns. Silex is a very important thing to farm as they are a mat for avian treats. Avian treats are your first step to tame a wonderful flying mount. Make sure to collect and store so you can build your quantity up. You will need quite a bit of it. I then get out my torches and I start lining up the inside of my base. You can press F7 to display the light levels. Super handy! I then continue building my base. I sleep the night. Day 25. I block Tempest in my base with temporary dirt to protect him, because I don't want him to go anywhere. 
I want him to be safe. I then start to do something else. I quickly check the time played and realize I have hit the 5 hour mark. This is when I can get hit by any random Lycanite event. I then quickly change my plans for the next few days. I then go towards the back side behind my base and begin digging into the side of the mountain. This is extremely important. I am creating myself a panic shelter. Panic shelters are very important to do in RL craft as it is pretty much the best way to protect yourself from most Lycanite events. So summer is most likely here and I need a place to cool down. That is another really good reason why it's great to build a panic shelter inside a mountain. It is the place to go for when I know danger is approaching me. I then place water on one side of the wall to give myself a way to cool off quickly. When I am in the water, I am also considered in the mountain biome which is normally cold. So it really helps out during summer in the early RL craft. I craft and place an iron door. I already feel pretty safe already. I continue making it safer. I sleep the night. Day 26. I decided that I wanted this area to be my mineshaft as well because I needed extra stone for my build. So I start to create a standard three wide staircase. I actually do the same thing for when I play vanilla Minecraft. But RL Craft has insane structures in caves underground as well. So, it is quite important to go underground for the unique loot and resources you will need for the future. Now I split the panic shelter and mineshaft using trap doors and an iron door. As I want to keep them separate from each other, sometimes mobs can come up from the staircase you make and catch you off guard. Remember, I still want this to be a safe space for me. I continue mining down and I find a patch of clay. I collect it all as it will be used for my base in the future. I sleep the night. First time a reaper wakes me up. I take him out. I sleep the night. Day 27. I wake up to a rock. This is him. This will eventually be my flying mount. Well. Not my actual mount right now, and probably not ever, it'll be a different one that spawns. But yeah, rocks are avians, that's why we collect the silex meat for the avian treats. I quickly head over to my storage to see if I have the resources to make myself a soul gazer. Soul gazers are a great way to increase the learning and taming process whenever you use a soul gazer on them. Very awesome. I sadly don't have the mats for it just yet. I head back to the mine. I start hearing lots of mobs. It's getting intense and I break an opening to the cave. I draw my bow. I take out a thing in the shadows. I'll explain that later in the uh, series, you know? I get approached by a genek or genek or however you pronounce that deadly poisonous creature. I take it out. I hear another creepy noise coming from the dark. I carefully block the cave as I cave deeper in the depths. I find a creeper. I head back up. I sleep the night. Day 28. I continue mining. I look at some ores and find a silver ore node. I mine it. Silver is one of the most valuable resources in the game as it is used for countless things in RL craft. Don't ever leave silver behind. You will always need more. I then reach bedrock and find silverfish blocks as I am in a mountain biome. Another reason why I wanted to mine under a mountain biome. They give good amounts of XP and sometimes healing supplies. An infernal silverfish spawns. He has ninja and I know if I tried to fight him hand to hand, I would lose. So I do something that I knew would work. I back up as far as I can to where he won't locate or reach me with his ninja ability. I draw my bow and loose two arrows. Want to hear the crazy part? I actually killed him with my first arrow. He was so far I couldn't even see him but I managed to execute and kill my first ninja inferno mob. I head back down in shock 
and see that the silverfish dropped silver boots. I continue looking for more silverfish blocks. I head back upstairs to my storage and smelt down more cobblestone. I open a 3x3 area in my base to where I can get inside and I craft myself some iron lattice. I wanted to create an easy way to get into my base, especially for my horse, Tempest. I then ride back to the village to collect the anvil. I am not high skilled enough to use the anvil, so I do a simple mechanic to collect it, similar to how you collect the dragon egg in the end. I head back and I find more Silex. I realize the anvil is slightly damaged, so I craft myself a new one using my iron. And I use it to now craft myself the reforging station. Now it does require building skill level 8 to use, but this is one of the most epic stations in the entire game. This thing can reroll all of your qualities to make it the best. Now it can get expensive, but super worth it. Now it is time for me to get more health. This is one of the ways to do just that. I grab my leather and reforge my tool belt. Are you kidding me? First try? Undying quality? The best quality you can get in RL Craft. Undying. I then reforge my light arrow quiver. After a few tries, I get healthy quality. It'll do for now. I grab and use most of my gold for the potion rings. I get athletic on both, which is pretty decent mobility. I reforge my iron chest plate and get toughness. That'll be fine for now too. You can see my health now that is pretty much all on four hearts. Pretty awesome, right? I heal up fully. A blood moon is rising? I get that message. I don't realize until I am trying to sleep. I realize I can't and immediately realize what is about to happen. I then quickly panic and run into my dirt hut with Tempest. We are both panicking and don't know what to do, hoping that the dirt wall will hold. As soon as that thought crosses into my mind, a rock picks up a creeper and blows up my wall. I quickly patch up the hole and watch carefully. A spider approaches and I exterminate it. Now since it seems safe for now, it is time to explain something in RL Craft. When you open your inventory, you can click on the Soul Gazer icon and this will show you every mob you encounter from the Lycanites Mobs mod. This is where you can see the status of your knowledge rank with each and when you reach knowledge rank 2, you can then tame and summon that specific mob. Now you do need a summoning staff in order to summon that mob in which it does require magic skill level 8 to use. After I go through each mob I have encountered, I go outside and realize it is getting daytime. I have done it. I have survived my first blood moon. Also, I didn't really go over what happens during a blood moon. All you need to know is during a blood moon, hundreds of mobs spawn all around you. And during the early game of RL Craft, if you aren't inside somewhere safe, you will get swarmed. And the best thing about a blood moon? Once you get through the night, every single blood moon mob will eventually perish. So the play is to wait out the night until all the mobs start dying. So I do just that. I clean up a few spiders and see an enderman. Now note this down. Endermen aren't the same endermen you are used to seeing. When you aggro an enderman, it will do everything in its power to get to you. That means it can even break blocks. Yeah, do not mess with them until later in game. And yeah, I didn't sleep the night. Day 29, I patch up the creeper hole and then I continue building my base. I finished the ceiling, and yeah, I know the floor is made of grass blocks. It is fine for now, 
I can even place a bunch of flowers in my base as it will spawn fairies to heal my wounds. Very nice for now. It will work, but I do have future plans for the flooring. So then I head back to the mine to look for more silverfish and ores. I try to avoid redstone for now as it can spawn a powerful crystal mob. I go towards a hole where I hear silverfish and I encounter my first ever darkling. These things are incredibly dangerous that can suck the life out of you in seconds if you don't kill it in just fast enough time. I exterminate this being. Out of all the mobs in RL craft, darklings are actually one of my favorite as it is just a cool mob to have in the game. Even though they're creepy, they're a fun summoning mob to use in the future. I kill more silverfish. I encounter another inferno mob. It has no dangerous effect, so I eliminate it easily. I get a bash 3 book. I can see myself using it, possibly in the future. Nice! I fight more, and I mine some ore, a mob spawns, I eliminate, and I head back upstairs. I grab my quartz in redstone, and I craft myself a season clock. Very good to know which season it is. It is indeed midsummer, but I am doing well living in my panic shelter for the most part this season. See, building and living near a cold biome comes in such importance, and it is all working out for me. Oh, also, I think when I was underground, it was nighttime. Is it day 29? I am losing track of which day it is now. Every now and then, I will check a clock to see which day I am on. Doesn't really serve an importance at this time. I continue mining and find heart crystal ore. Yes, this is a decent way to get extra hearts. Now be careful when you mine all crystal type ores. Can be very dangerous. I then head back upstairs and outside and I start to move my storage and crafting stations inside my base. As it is time for me to live in my base. I then grab my flowers and place them all over my floor so fairies can now spawn. Very lovely. The next day, I look around my base and I clean up some mobs around me. I then head back into the mine and remember, you guys remember that 5 hour mark? Yeah, that 5 hour mark was a while ago and up to now. Any one of those seconds a Lycanite event could have spawned. I know it will be happening very soon, and I hope, I just hope, it won't be anything too dangerous. I will put a link down in the description of the Lycanite events. Are we gonna get something really easy and safe like Poop Party? Or will we be defeated by Sharknado or Black Plague? We shall see.